Good afternoon, golf fans. I'm Chris Jarrell. I'm here for DailyFantasySportsRankings.com. It's been a while since I did a PGA video. I've um, been doing a lot of NASCAR stuff, so what I wanted to do was just kind of go over um, to some of the new customers out there. been getting a lot of questions about my cheat sheet that I do every week. Um, so I just wanted to go over how to open it up, where to find it, how to create your own copy, how to play with the models, and then uh, just go over some of the other resources that I use every week in my article to kind of break down the field, to break down the course, um, and just kind of narrow down uh, the field of players that you're going to use every week when constructing lineups. So to start out, we'll go to dailyfantasysportsrankings.com, and on the home page, you can click on Other, scroll down, and that's where you're going to find my PGA NASCAR uh, NHL season's over now, but that's where you're going to find the, the niche sport um, articles. So you're going to click on my Memorial Tournament article for this week, and then once that opens, you can kind of go, I go over uh, just some, you know, preview the course, preview the field, that sort of thing. And then i got some uh, some stuff here. This whole composition, approach shot distribution, that kind of information comes from Fantasy National Golf Club. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a little bit. Uh, previous winners, top stats in the model that I'm using. And I'm going to go over how I come up with those stats here in a little bit as well. I look at uh, two players for course history, two players for current form and uh, two players when looking at my stats model as well as my stats model when using uh, Fantasy National as well. Look at the weather. Now at the top of the article is where you can find the link to the cheat sheet every week um, right here, DFS PGA Weekly Cheat Sheet. I'm going to add a little bit different link here uh, in the future, a little bit easier to find, but uh, for now this is where you can find it. So you can click on it there and it's going to open a view only mode of the cheat sheet. It's going to look a lot like this without the highlighted players. Um, those are just some of the players I'm going to mention here in a little bit. So what you're going to want to do if you want to play with the model, sort any of these columns, is go up to File, make a copy, name it whatever you'd like here, and click OK. It's going to open up one. If you don't rename it, it's just going to say Copy of DFS PGA Cheat Sheet, and then uh, the tournament name after that, of course. So what you're going to be able to do now, it's always going to be sorted by DraftKings pricing to start. So say if you wanted to sort by FanDuel, if you're playing over there this week, um, click on any of the salaries in that FanDuel column, which is D. Go up to Data. We want to go highest to lowest, so we're going to go Z to A. And now we've got the field. It's going to be sorted by uh, FanDuel salaries here, as you can see. So it kind of helps when comparing back and forth to see who's kind of a little bit better value. Something else I have to kind of compare which site maybe a player is better on when looking at uh, odds to FanDuel and DraftKings salary. If we scroll over to the right here a little bit um, in the gray column, matches the player info column here as you can see. Um, I've got ranks for DraftKings salary, FanDuel salary, odds, and then the differential. Um, so for instance we've got Brandon Grace, he's 13th in DraftKings salary, 9th in FanDuel salary, so maybe a little bit better play over on FanDuel, but he's 15th in odds, so he gets a negative number there. Uh, just kind of saying, you know, when comparing it to uh, the outright odds for the week, he's maybe a bit overpriced when it comes to both sites. So some of the players, uh, for instance, Bubba, Bubba Watson is 10th in odds, but he's 17th in FanDuel, 14th in DraftKings, so he gets a plus rate in here. Um, so that's just something that I always look at uh, to decide whether a player is overpriced, underpriced, compared to odds. Um, you can do the same thing you know, when you're looking at official World Golf rankings as well. That's something I might be adding here in the near future. So the next thing on the sheet that you're going to see in this green area is the raw stats. Um, under there's like 20 25 different stats I've got listed here this is just the raw stat ranking like driving distance um, accuracy and percentage good drive percentage that sort of stuff proximity is in feet um, so for instance Justin Rose from 100 to 125 yards is 16.3 feet on his average proximity now these stats you're gonna find if you're looking at PGA tour.com um, aren't gonna be exactly matching uh, I, I tend to change them throughout the year. So earlier in the year when we have smaller sample sizes, I will use like, you know, 70%, 60-70% of last year's stat rankings, and then 30-40% uh, of this year's stat rankings. And then as the year goes on, we have a little bit bigger sample size. Um, I tend to change that a little bit, but I always want to leave a little bit on last year, just so we can get a scope of a player, of especially the players that have played multiple years. So right now, for instance, my stats are 95% from this season and 5% uh, looking at last season. Then I weigh those together, and then that's what you're going to see here. So obviously green is going to be good, red is going to be bad in any of these columns. You can sort any of those these columns as well. 
Um, just remember your A to Z when sorting in your data column here, A to Z and Z to A, that uh, A to Z is lowest to highest, Z to A is highest to lowest. So when looking at like scoring average and stuff here, you're obviously going to go lowest to highest. And looking at like say driving distance or stro any strokes gained, you're going to want to go highest to lowest. So then I take those stat ranks over here in the orange, and then these are the actual ranks of the field. So there's 100 and I believe 120 players this week in the field. Um, so I rank it from 1 to 120. So as you can see here, Dustin Johnson is first in this field in strokes gain tee to green off the tee. He's second in approach plus off the tee, which is your strokes gain ball striking, which combines your strokes gain off the tee and strokes gain approach. So that's something to look at here. And then these numbers above here, that is the model. Um, so that's kind of how I'm weighing each of these stats this week. I'll usually pick out four or five stats on the max, what I feel is important each week. Um, and then I break it down that way. So to, to break those stats down sometimes, um, what I'm using early in the week is I'm looking at Fantasy National Golf Club here, and on their main page it looks like this, and I hit Course Breakdown. And then once I get over here, you can actually sort by, um, you can really break it down by top 10s, cut makers, top 20, the winners. So I look at top 10s, I'm looking for upside mostly. If I'm looking for cash games, you know, I'll, I'll go top 20 or even cut makers and look at it that way. So one thing I notice here off the bat, the average strokes game per round for top 10 finishers um, is a little more heavy on strokes gain approach, which makes a lot of sense. There's a little bit wider fairways here at Mirrorfield Village. Um, it's really a, a second shot course, and you can actually see that quite a bit in some of the player quotes. Something else that I use is the Fantasy Golf Act from Future of Fantasy. So we'll scroll down here and we'll just click on the Memorial Tournament. And you can get a lot of course information here as well green speeds, uh, fairways, how easy the fairways are to hit, uh, the greens, how hard they are to hit, what type of grasses, and then some tournament angles that he comes up with every week. And then at the bottom, I like to go through, and I like to read a lot of these uh, um, player, um, and you got Jack Nichols here, of course. He's the course designer. Reading some of their, just some of their quotes over the years, over the last two or three years, kind of break down what's important here at the course. Something else I look at, you'll see in my article every week, is the approach shot distribution, hole compensation. So one thing that stands out here, obviously, is the par fours. There's six of them from 450 to 500 yards, which in turn um, will give you a lot of approach shots from the players from 150 to 175 and 175 to 200. A lot of undulation on these greens. So something I'm looking at definitely this week is proximity from these two ranges. And you can see on my cheat sheet, I've actually weighed those here. Now on the main sheet I haven't changed that yet. I've just had proximity and that's for a couple of reasons. I'm actually going to talk about that with a couple of players here coming up shortly. So the other thing on the sheet I will mention is I've got course history for the last five years and not only um, for cuts I also look at where they place because I think there's a lot of difference in Wayne course history when looking at guys that maybe missed the cut by one or two strokes versus guys that missed the cut by eight to ten strokes. Um, so they're getting a little bit more of a downgrade. Like a Brandon Grace, for instance, he's finished. He's missed the cut in 2013, 2014, but he didn't just miss the cut by a little bit. He's finishing 104th and 114th when the cut's usually top 70 and, and ties. You're looking at like 70 to 75 players um, who are making the cut every week versus a guy like Ricky Fowler who missed in 2016, finished 88. So that's that's going to be a little bit better, a little more weighed. Um, in the model than you're looking at your course history. So got course history for the last five years, average finishing position over the last five years, and then we've got current form, uh, last five tournaments for each player, where they play, same thing when it comes to missed cuts. Um, you know, as you see here, Phil Mickelson missed the cut, but he did uh, 134th place, so it's a little bit better than, say, finishing 78th, just missing the cut by a stroke sort of thing. So. One thing to note when playing with the models here is any player who doesn't have course history, uh, Xander Schofley for instance, first time here, automatically gets a last place rank in that area, which in turn is going to affect his overall weighted ranking. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at my overall weighted rankings, that they can sometimes be a bit skewed because of that. Louis Oosthuizen. and so you may have a player that fits the stats model, fits the current form model, but you're wondering why he's ranked maybe outside the top 50 or why he isn't ranked higher. That's some of the reason is maybe in either the course history, current form, or stats model, they don't have a ranking, which they automatically get a dead last rank. Like you also see in stats here, um, Sharma, Niemann, 
uh, Miyazato, they don't have stats enough stats on the PGA Tour to rank, so they're going to be down a little bit as well. And you'll most, mostly notice this when there's a lot of European tours in the field because they don't have the stats, and I haven't incorporated all the European Tour stats yet into my models and stuff. So if you're wondering why that is, that's exactly why. So then over on the right, now we looked at course history, we looked at current form, we've looked at stats. So then over in the far, far right here is where I put the whole model together. So this week I'm looking at 40% on my stats model. And, and here's the ranks on everyone in my stats model looking at my key stats. We've got the av uh, course history looking at average finish at the course. We've got form, which is just looking at average finish over the last five tournaments. And then we've got DraftKings scoring looking at the last five tournaments as well. So as you can see, there's some players who... Um, like one that stands out right off the bat is Phil Mickelson. He ranks 28th in the form, which is average finish over his last five tournaments, but he ranks 10th in DraftKings scoring. So just go ahead and assume that uh, maybe he hasn't had some good finishes, uh, making a lot of bogeys, but he's also made a lot of birdies, which is what we're kind of looking for in DraftKings scoring. In turn, we've got players like Adam Hadwin, who's ranked 68th in the DraftKings score in the last five tournaments. So he's not making a ton of birdies, but he's not making a ton of bogeys or double bogeys either because he's 18th in the forum ranking. So he's getting some high finishes, but not quite as good when it comes to the DraftKings scoring. So just something that I, I tend to look at a lot each week. Then these numbers to the right, I just use that one kind of doing my write-ups and stuff. And all that means is top 15 in all four categories, top 20 in all four categories. Just just kind of pick out guys that are ranking good across all four categories on my cheat sheet. And I do talk about that in my preview article quite a bit as well. So like, for instance, this week, Justin Rose and Emiliano Grillo wrote them both up. They, they're the only two players in the field that rank top 15 in stats, history, form, and DK point form um, on my cheat sheet. And this, once you create your own copy, this is something that you can come in and adjust yourself. And you can really play around with this. Um, so you can go up here and you can change any of these stat rankings to whatever you feel is important this week. Maybe you want, you know, 60% on strokes gained approach this week. So really I've got 40% on, on your approach shots because I've got 30 on strokes gained approach and then 10 on your um, proximity from those key distances. So you can change that around all you want, any of these stats. If there's any stats that aren't listed on here that you maybe want me to add, definitely hit me up. Um, messaging, Twitter, anything like that, and uh, I'll definitely consider adding it to the cheat sheet. You can also come over here, and if you feel stats are maybe a little less and you want some more on course history, if you maybe just want to build a course history model, you can definitely do that. Uh, maybe just course history and form and ignore the stats, or maybe stats and form, ignore course history, anything like that. You can come and adjust this. So the stats model is always going to add up to 100, and then these four columns here, uh, CS to CV, which is your stats, history, form, and DK points, I want that to add up to 100 as well. And then this is where it's weighted. That's the formula for, for weighting it. And then this is your overall rankings. And then it's the same. It's just mirrored over here on the left so that you can see it throughout the sheet. Maybe you're over here. You want to see where a player is ranked. So then I'll go through once, you know, I put my initial model together and I'll go over here into the overall weighted rankings when I can see all this data. And I'll go up and I'll sort lowest to highest just to kind of see where the players rank each week. Um, so as you can see, we got Rose, Spieth, Griot, Leishman, Patrick Reed, Phil Mickelson, DeChambeau, DJ, Finau, and those are your top 10 in the model overall. As you can see, there's some value here this week. Definitely we've got some guys in the 8 and 7K range um, at the top of the model, which is very nice to see, um, especially when, you know, when you're looking at cash games and going a little bit more balanced. That makes me feel a little bit more comfortable about building cash games, whereas if we get a lot of... Uh, um, 10k plus guy golfers on DraftKings who are showing up at the top you know say there's six of the top 10 who are 10k it kind of makes me a little bit leery about playing cash games that week just because a lot of the values at the top of the board it's not always going to be right either um, there's always going to be some things maybe not weighted absolutely perfect I got a lot of guys that are messaging me telling me how they've been playing around they've been back testing a lot of the models just to kind of come up with their own especially even when they're just betting outrights top 10s top 5s top 20s things like that so definitely play around with it uh, there, there's definitely a lot to gain by just playing with a model yourself so then the other stuff on the sheet I just kind of want to mention I just kind of do a course overview you'll see that in my preview article got the last five years results and this is where you're gonna f this is where I pull the course history from you can actually go and look at the 
at the hole by hole stats from the last five years as well 2013 to 2017 right now uh, you can see where the birdies come from on the course you can see which holes are better than other holes uh, when it comes to scoring and stuff like that and then some of the other things that I like to look at when it comes to um, Musonomics and his Fantasy National Golf Club here is just playing with the models a lot here so one thing I I'm looking at strokes gain approach a lot this week so one thing I like to do is go to the sample size pick out roll in report here pick strokes gained approach so then you get the last 4, 8, 12, 24, 50, and 100 rounds and guys that are ranked in strokes gain approach. So you can kind of see how guys are trending. Um, you may see guys like, uh, for instance, DJ, 11th, 9th, 19th, 28th, 32nd, 74th. So he's kind of been trending down, whereas guys like Justin Rose went from 35th, 12th, 13th, and then top 5 over the last 3, um, which would be the last 3 tournaments, providing they haven't missed a cut because 4 rounds, obviously, 4, 12, 4 8, and 12 rounds. So you can do that for almost anything on here, rolling report for, these are all the different stats that you can look at the rolling report for. If you don't want to do rolling report, that's just something that I prefer. You can go up here and you can do birdies, fairways, greens, uh, proximity, par 3, 4, 5, and putting. So another thing that I like to do, I'm just going to reset the page here, get rid of some of these excess pages. We're on bent grass this week, bent grass greens. So these are some of the other filters that you can do along the side. I like to go to bent grass, wait for it to load, go back up to that rolling report, and go strokes gain putting. Just kind of see guys that are trending well on bent grass greens, which are very fast. So something else you can do. Um, you don't really have to. I like just sorting it by the green type itself. But you can actually go down to um, green speed, Velcro, average, fast, lightning fast. So this week I would, you know, you'd want to sort it out by lightning fast uh, or fast, probably both of them together. They're supposed to be fast greens this week. So as you can see, Miliano Grillo has just been dominating the bent grass greens lately. As you can see, obviously, Rory McIlroy and Jordan Spieth have struggled a little bit with their putting on bent grass greens. So that's just some of the ways that you can use Fantasy National. You can also go, um, something else, I, I, I raced the... Uh, here but uh, Josh Culp there he likes to look at uh, you know certain courses that that kind of match they can use as reference as compared to different courses each week so you can go and you can grab some of those courses if you have a list of your own and you can just go and you hold the control button and you can actually pick out courses that you want and then when you let go it's gonna go and it's just gonna sort by those courses that you chose so that's another option you can do as well I'm gonna go back to all courses here I wasn't picking specific courses, I was just kind of showing you how to, how to pick those out. So there is just absolutely a ton of information on the Fantasy National Golf Club. I've been using it for a couple of years now, pretty much since its inception. Um, it's helped me a ton in narrowing down, helping me do my write-ups, helping me uh, build better lineups each week, helping me with outright bets, uh, top tens, that sort of thing. Just pretty much any kind of fantasy or golf betting in general. It is probably, it is the best site out there, definitely. So uh, um, that's just how I use that. So I'm going to go back to my cheat sheet here. Just going to talk about a couple of players that I'm targeting this week. Now that we've kind of gone, gone over the sheet and some of the ways that I like to narrow things down. So we're going to sort by DraftKings pricing again here. Z to A talked about Jason Day in the article he's had better uh, course history here lately um, excellent form he's number one on the form right now uh, he's got the win in the top five he's got two wins on the season he doesn't like you see he ranks down here in the strokes gain approach that's why he he ranks down a little bit in the overall weighted ranking but uh, definitely like him this week Justin Rose number one in the overall model as you can see he's finished he hasn't played here in two years but he's finished second and eighth so top tens in two of his last three events he does have a missed cut there coming off the win last week he's at excellent form um, he ranks well in the stats so he just like I said he's one of the two players that ranked top 15 along with Emiliano Grillo who's also had excellent form lately excellent proximity I'm just gonna go here and look at that yeah, we've got uh, 24th in overall proximity, and he's 11th and 20th from the key ranges there, 13th in par 4 scoring. A um, little bit down on the par 5s, 
but he does make up for it on the par fours. He doesn't make the big numbers in the par four, so definitely liking him. Matt Kutcher, I wrote about for course history. He's been absolutely amazing here. He won the event back in 2013. He's got back-to-back T4s here. He's got seven top tens in ten events here in his career, and he's never missed a cut. So at 8,500, I think him and Grio make an excellent pairing to start a cash game lineup. I'll even, I don't even mind going up to Justin Rose either. Jordan Spieth, uh, he stands out to me again this week. As many of you who read my articles weekly know, uh, I like to write about him quite a bit. He has absolutely sucked at putting this year. Um, it's been very difficult roster. And he's making cuts, but he's getting like top 20s and stuff like that, which isn't really what you want for the price. He's been, he's been in that uh, 10 to 11k price range in some of these fields lately. And as you can see, he hasn't finished inside the top 20 um, in three straight tournaments. The thing about it now is, for the first time all year, at least since the Tournament of Champions that I've got listed on my other sheet, he's below 10K. So I'm going to give him consideration in GPPs this week for sure. Um, He's definitely, for his career, a better putter on bent grass. He's number four when looking at strokes gain approach. Slide over even a bit more. He's number one in proximity. Top five from 125 all the way up to 200 yards. He stands out in par 5 birdie or better percentage. He stands out in par 4 scoring. He just stands out in so many areas that eventually that putter's got to come around. And when it does, the rest of his game is there. Um, he's got winning upsides. And I'm def- I'm also betting him outright this week. I've actually got him at 19-1 to 1 this week on uh, one of the sites that I use. So I'll definitely be uh, looking at him, have some exposure to him this week as well. Mark Leishman, someone that also stood out. Um, He's third in 150 to 175. A little bit less when you're getting up to that 175 to 200. But uh, recently his proximity has been there. As you can see, he's 16th in strokes gain approach on the sheet. He's got some good uh, course history here as well. Top 15 in three straight events at the Memorial. And despite a little bit of up and down form, you know, he's got a missed cut here three tournaments ago. But he does have three top 10s in his last five tournaments. Course history. He's got the stats. Another player I think we can uh, consider in all formats. Going down a bit more, I do like Tony Finau. He was 40th here last year, but he's, he's had success here 8th and 11th to two years prior to that. Doesn't have the best form coming in, but uh, definitely hits on the stats this week. He's 18th in strokes gain approach, and he's one of the players I was talking about uh, why I changed from overall proximity, which he ranks 80th. Um, Just kind of looking at those key ranges because he is 27th and 26th from that 150 to 175 and 175 to 200. So he's uh, third in par 5 scoring, so he stands out there. He can make his hay on the the par 5s for sure. Not the greatest on the par 4s, but uh, going over here, he's top 20 in bogey avoidance and birdie or better percentage. So it makes a lot of sense. He's got a high floor and a high ceiling. Bryson DeChambeau, I wrote about him in the article as well. He's only played here once, but he's top 40. I think he can do better than that this year for sure. He's had some, he's been making cuts. He hasn't got an you know, excellent form the last two turns, but he got top fives the two tournaments before that. And then, uh, like Fino, he stands out uh, from the stats as well. He's 8th uh, off the tee, 14th in approach, 7th in ball striking. 30th in overall proximity, 15th from the 150 to 175. And 70th from 175 to 200. And he also is top 20 in par 4 scoring. So he stands out in a lot of areas. So I'll definitely be looking at him, especially under 8K this week. Then just kind of going down, I uh, highlighted these next guys in blue just because they're going to be more GPP for me this week. Uh, I should have had Spieth in blue too. But uh, Cantley, he finished 35th here last year in his first try. He's coming off a missed cut. I think he's going to be a little bit lower. A lot of people have been chasing him. But even looking at his odds... In this range of pricing, um, his odds are marginally better than like everyone around him. So we'll definitely be looking at him. Um, he's got that, you know, he's really good off the tee. That's not as important this week, of course, a little bit wider fairways. 45th out of 120 in approach. So not too bad there. Proximity's down uh, 96th in proximity, but he is 23rd from that 175 to 200 range which I think that's where a lot of his um, are going to come from, just because he's, an, he, as you can see, he's, well, he's 26th in distance, so he should be able to get ahead a little bit on those on those holes. But uh, definitely GPP just because coming off, I think he's going to be lower owned coming off uh, a missed cut. 
Chris Kirk also stood out when when breaking down um, the the trending proximity over the last four, eight, twelve, twenty four, fifty rounds of golf on Fantasy National, and I think his course history might keep people off him. He's missed the last two cuts here. He does have a fourth back in 2014, 36th in 2015. He's got top 15s in two of his last three. Stands out in a lot of the stats as well. Like I said, the strokes gain approach is kind of what I'm concentrating on mostly this week, and he stands out in those areas as well. So definitely looking at him from a GPP uh, perspective as well. And a couple more guys. Nick Watney, I think he's going to be, he's always, you know, he's kind of a roller coaster ride but uh, definitely look at him in certain instances he's always less than five percent owned so you don't got to worry about ownership he's got horrible course history so i think that's going to play a part and you know he's going to be one to two percent owned here this week in this loaded field coming off a missed cut he does have upside as you can see um he's just kind of average when looking at the stats but he was another player when looking at recent proximity and recent strokes gained approach that stood out on fantasy national as well so definitely looking at him and then uh, ball striker extraordinaire at 7,200. I love looking at uh, Keegan Bradley. He's got top 10s in two of his last three events here. Coming off a 7th place finish. Um, he's 2nd in strokes gain approach. 5th in strokes gain ball striking. So definitely like looking at that. 8th in overall proximity. Top 5 from 200 plus if he's going to be in that zone. He, you know, he doesn't have a whole bunch of distance. So I think that makes a lot of sense looking at the 200 plus for him. He's top 40 from his 175 to 200. And fifth, again, from 175, or 150 to 175. Doesn't make a ton of birdies. As you can see, he's a little bit down when you're looking at uh, birdie or better. Um, but top 50 and par 4 and par 5. But at 7,200, I don't think we need a whole bunch from him. You know, like a top 20, um, I think, is enough from 7,200. And he's 20th in my overall rank. So definitely looking at him as well this week. Going down a little bit more, I feel Bill Haas is a little bit under underpriced. He is 75th in my overall rankings. He hasn't been that great lately when looking at form. He's coming off a of 14th, so hopefully that's a sign of things to come. He did very well last week. He's got top 25s here in four of his last five trips. I'm not going to really look at the stats because, like I said, he's been trending down when looking at form, and that's kind of why he ranks 75th. But at 7,100 for someone that has that kind of course history, he's the type of player I'm looking at here. Um, definitely on my radar this week. So that pretty much covers some of the players I'm looking at. That's not all the players I'm going to have on my list, but I didn't want to get into a super long video. It's already about uh, 25, 30 minutes. So um, if you have questions about any other players I meant, that I maybe didn't mention here, hit me up at the bottom of my article. You can go to the comment section of the article. Um, leave your comment there. I'll get to those as we lead up to lineup lock. You can hit me up in the DFSR member chat room, or you can hit me up the bottom of this video or on Twitter at, at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. That concludes the video this week. I'll be back with another PGA golf video next week. Stay tuned for more MLB NASCAR videos, other stuff to come. And if you have any suggestions at all, again, hit me up in the comments or on Twitter. Thanks a lot. Let's see some green screens this week, everybody. Good luck.